Okay, so uh, string literals have the wrong type. What's the result of this program? What does it print? Four. Because the type of string literal is an array of const char, and this includes the null terminator. It's pretty obvious when you print it, you get the letters, and then you get zero, which is really annoying. The answer for that is it's a const char, so you get the begin and end overloads, and it just returns, includes the null terminator. So, Never use string literals with ranges, they have the wrong type. It's just, you're going to get bit by that, just avoid that. And this is a bit unfortunate. It's especially unfortunate because I think cell bear work. For us, strings are just ranges. So we don't use a uh, std string with its bazillion member functions, we just use range algorithms to find things, to search things, to do things. For example, we also don't use format. Instead, we use ranges. So we just concat our string parts together and have a range that converts an integer into a range of characters. So we just use ranges, but we can't use std begin and end because they return the wrong thing. So we have our own begin and end, and if you have an array of char type, we subtract one in end. But that's not really ideal. For starters, we can't really have regular arrays of char type because they will just be wrong there. And we also want to use std begin and std end and not have our own alternative hierarchy of things. So there's a fix to that, and that is to give string literals the correct type. So we can create the correct type, a string literal, contains a pointer at length, and we then have it return the correct thing and make it implicitly convertible to the C string. And then we have a user-defined literal, it takes the string, it takes the length, this does not include the null terminator, we just return the type. And now that we call it um, underscore TC in the global namespace, because if you want to use a string literal, you have to use using namespace um, to, for a user-defined literal, which is really annoying, so we just put it in the global namespace. <laughs> and for that, it just works. So size is now three, and we can print it correctly. And this is really useful because we use that sort of thing a lot, just use underscore TC uh, for the string literals. But we can be even better. So, for example, we want to call a string a C API that takes a C string. So we just pass it a C string. But when we want to add some prefix, which is another compile time constant, we have to use temporary allocation, get the C string. It is unfortunate. Um, there's a fix for that. Uh, we can have the preprocessor concatenate the strings. We use this a lot in the code base uh, because it's, you know, what else are you supposed to do? Well, we can use um, our type again. So we first introduce a literal range. This is a literal range of the given T values. It will dynamically like create an array when instantiated the begin and end to return that pointers, gives the correct result even though it includes a null terminator, and is also implicitly convertible for the C string. Then we change our UDL to return that thing. So since C plus plus 20, we can take a string as a non-type template parameter. So TC string template parameters just to wrap out our char array. We get our char array, we convert that uh, into a little range using uh, index sequence and an immediately invoked lambda. And then now IBC underscore TC is TC literal range of char and ABC, which is an empty type and will create an array as needed. And then we can overload TC concat. So if you concat one or more literal ranges, we just get a new literal range. This doesn't actually instantiate any memory, it doesn't create any strings, only when we use it. By using, when we use that, we will trigger the conversion to the C string, have a C string, can pass that on to the C API. So this is pretty convenient. Another thing we can do is, for example, so by default, all strings are ASCII, and so the type will be char, uh, TC char ASCII, which is our custom type to indicate that something is ASCII. If you want UTF-8, we use the U8 prefix, but we don't want char 80 because that no, nobody else uses that. So we just use char, right? We can do the conversion and sort of just get the correct type out of there. And on Windows, you have to use UTF-16, but you can't use char 16 here, you have to use white char. So we will do that accordingly. So you can just use the U prefix and get a white char out of it. So we can just pass that onto WinMPM. Yeah. We also have a function that converts a range to uh, some other character type using Unicode transcoding. And if you have a little range of char ASCII, that's straightforward, just change the char type. You don't have to touch the data, it's just ASCII in any encoding, so we can have like zero overt conversions from ASCII strings to any other encoding entirely happening at compile time. They will not even show up in the memory anymore because they won't be instantiated. So that's pretty convenient. We will add that to our open source library. It's not yet because the guy in charge of maintaining it is currently at a conference in England. 
But once that's done, it will be there. Uh, if you're interested, we are hiring. Thank you. I'm out of time. Well done.